do it properly. You're watching YTV, the cable network. This is Afternoon Live. I'm Catherine Apenovich, and now prepare to be astonished by some absolutely fabulous photographs. This is a photographer. His name is Hag. Hag, it's a great... It's like I feel most of the time, actually, Hag. You've taken some fabulous photographs. Thank You're going you. to explain to us how you did them as well. And I mean, right. a lot of them we've actually seen on... on um, on posters and things. I mean, we've just got punch one up here. And this is, uh, what, what do you call this? Uh, this was called Genesis, and Athena published it as a, as a, as a poster. Uh, it was just a simple idea of a baby in a flower, really. And I, I made a rather dramatic image of it. It is, it is extraordinary, though, to see that, you know, the, 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 little, the little baby coming out of the flower. How yeah. did you actually manage to uh, do that? Well, I, I do use a process called combination printing, where yeah. I, I take lots of pictures. And in my darkroom, instead of having one enlarger, I have eight. So put an element in each and larger and just print that bit using various masking techniques mm. uh, to ensure that you just get the bit that you want. And yeah. just join it together and have a lot of patience is the main thing. I yeah, think. yeah. The, the other thing about them as well is, I mean, the ideas that you come up with, uh, you know, where do you get them from? It's a good question. Where do <laughs> ideas come from? What are you Who on? <laughs> <laughs> no, I never did that. What is? Uh, the ideas, they come, sometimes they evolve, sometimes there's an idea and you go out and photograph all the elements. Uh, sometimes it's a matter of just looking at it and working at it and see how it develops and throwing away the bits you don't like and keeping the bits you do like. Do you have the idea first and then go and take the photographs or do you just go out and take a lot of photographs and then have the idea? Uh, I do take a lot of photographs anyway. Sometimes it's an idea, sometimes you're presented with a brief of course and you have to fulfil the brief, in which case you have to photograph the elements for mm. it in a way that I can put it together as well and make it look like a real picture at the end yeah. of the day. We've got, a, Although, we've got another picture up here. I can't actually quite see what that is. <laughs> it's a bit bright here. What's, what's that one? Well, this was, this was originally done as an advert for a black and white uh, uh, lab and all the elements in it were actually uh, similes of things that they did. Mm. And it was really a bit of a joke picture in that uh, uh, there's bits of a jigsaw, jigsaw puzzle in it, which yeah. is a combination of painting, which is what I do. This, this strip, effect you see here is about strip ups about joining things up together mm. uh, and there's processing which is the cans of peas which are lower down yeah can we get down to the cans uh, of peas a little bit lower down no well, no we, don't, we can, can. <laughs> <laughs> well no he's pulling out now i see always just trying to be arty as richard i see i see this is sort of the old there's the, there's the enlargement through the magnifying glass that was the uh supposed to be enlargement and you get the, the transfers here, which is something they do, which is which was the transistor radio and the fur, yeah. which you can't see, of course, but I know it's there. Uh, it's it, like, it, I mean, would you call yourself an impressionist with a camera, I suppose? That's more, it's a metaphysical artist, ah! I think, is the word. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear. Surrealist is a little too coarse. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it's extraordinary. You know, do you, you know, you say that you sometimes give them a brief. Do you take photographs for album covers or specifically for posters? I do album or covers and uh, magazine articles and things occasionally, and a little bit of advertising now and then. But yeah. mainly, my market is uh, for the posters. I mean, you did, you did a, a cover, which we're not going to show, actually, but it, I thought it was extraordinary, for uh, R.D. Lang. Now, R.D. Lang was, um, uh, was Psychoanalyst. a psychoanalyst. He wrote a bit some, of a guru in the 60s. wrote some really spooky things, but I mean, it was a very spooky picture as very well. Very strange, that you did a, yes. Did a I gouged his eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he laughed as well when he saw it. Now, this one here we've got here. I mean, Dali is how I would have described these. Very Dali. Little Dali, yes. This was done for this uh, Sunday Telegraph magazine. It was an article on the press called Psychological Profiling, where mm. at the scene of a rape or some awful crime, a psychologist goes along and decides what the character of the assailant is, like what sort of job he has, mm. and, and uh, even how tall they are, and vague things they come up with. Sometimes they get it right, sometimes they get it wrong. Mm. What extremes do you go to, then, to get the right picture? What extremes do I go? So I'll do yeah. anything to get the right picture. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of nude women as well you seem to take pictures of. Well, they do crop up. Nudity is yeah. fairly common in life, isn't mm. it? Of either sex, really. Yeah. Uh, if it's used correctly, I don't see any problem in that. If it's used tastefully, and it has a point to it, rather than just wireism, which, yeah. which isn't uh, really what I'm into at all. I mean, I mean, the purpose of my pictures is to stimulate the viewer to think about the world and what's going on. It is quite interesting because you pick the photographs up and you spend it ages just looking at them don't you because you just you you the, you know the one that we showed earlier on of the the girl sitting at the typewriter i mean as you got in closer you realized that there was a waterfall in the in the fire yes, and yes. and 
you just spend ages just gazing at them. Do you do that yourself? Well, or? yes, I put it all, I photograph everything and put it all together. I like lots of details in there so that people can find interesting things in it over a long period of time. Yeah. And maybe even change their ideas about it as, as the picture is revealed to them in yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you ever take an ordinary, I was going to say, do you ever take an ordinary snap? Occasionally it has been known, yes. But I, I do like to manipulate and interfere with the image. Yeah. I, I'm quite happy to destroy the sanctity of the photographic frame, which a lot of photographers get very upset about. Yeah, I suppose they do. Now here's the, uh, the lovely clown holding the, I mean, that is, is a sensationally happy sort of a gorgeous, luscious picture, that. I mean, I don't know how to describe it. What do you it's call that? It's gorgeous and luscious. It, it's just the clown holding the world, yeah. which is, a, for me, uh, talks about the state we're in at the moment. And we think we're running things, but actually, we're you see, you clowns you, fooling around with the world. The way that you, you say it like that, it makes it completely different to the way that I saw it. <laughs> I just thought it was like, we're happy and we're, we're happy. in the world, aren't we? You know, you, also, black and white, not colour. No, no, I'm not very interested in colour. I think colour's too real for me. Uh, I think in black and white, what imagines the colour? The colour is there in your brain. I think the older parts of our brain we originally saw in black and white. And I think mm. why we have this deep nostalgia in relation to black and white photography is too, too, it goes right back to our origins. Well, Hag, the photographs are absolutely sensational. Thank you can you. spend hours looking at this. Now you get some more printed up into posters. <laughs> I think they're well worth seeing. Watching YTV, the cable network, this is Afternoon Live. I'm Catherine Apanovich and I've been joined by Hag, fabulous photographer of this parish, as they say. Done some really incredible things with photographs. We saw them a little bit earlier on. Who would you say gave you the idea to this? Did it come out of your head or have you seen other people do this sort of thing? Uh, there is an American photographer called Jerry Olsman who works in that direction, but I've always been interested in manipulating images and changing them dramatically. Because Angus McBean does that, doesn't he? Angus it? McBean does it, but he doesn't do combination printing. He, like, he makes his things. Yeah. He actually makes them and photographs them. Okay, well, let's have a look at uh, another one of your photographs here. Now, it's beautiful, isn't it? Loads of texture on there. Lots of What's texture. that one called? This, was, this is called Open Mind. It was actually done for a reggae album cover. Yeah. Uh, some years ago, which was just about the the, uh, uh, the difference between uh, things that happen inside shells and things that happen outside shells. Of course, when you listen to a shell, you always hear the sea. Yeah. And, I had and it it's pouring out into the it, desert. It's lovely how you managed to get the water spilling out of the shell as well. Yeah. It, well, it's a little bit of a waterfall. Yeah. A huge waterfall it is, in fact. Do you have the, the sort of catalogue of things you think, now I want a waterfall to come out, so I know that I made a, I know that I made a, 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 no, get, a, a great photograph of a waterfall in 1982, yeah. Yeah. I think I'll just get that out. Do yeah. you do that well, sort well, I have of a thing? huge library, but sometimes it just don't fit and you have to go out and re-photograph it. What's the most difficult thing to photograph, would you say? Oh, that's a really hard question. <laughs> People, I think, are definitely the most difficult yeah. because they're so unpredictable. With landscapes and things, you just have to be very patient yeah. and look and wait for the right moment. Okay, let's look at uh, another uh, photograph here. We have. Um, this is, this is called the, the Fall. Yeah. It's just a very pretty picture of a cornfield with the Parthenon in it uh, on the horizon. From Athens. Yeah, it's so bizarre that, isn't it? Because I mean, you know, the Parthenon and the cornfield. Well, it gets around in our culture. Does, does the effects of the Greeks? You know, it affects our everyday lives. I think. Well, it's, 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 it is fabulous. But anyway, did you not? Were you not tempted to add colour to that because of the corn, the, the lovely colour? No, of the corn? sorry. <laughs> you have done some though, because I've seen some. You, did they you do, hand tint them? Or? They do get tinted with colour sometimes. Yes, yeah. uh, mainly for commercial reasons. It's usually the clients who want them tinted. But it is uh, so a serious photographers that like black and white, isn't it? It is, of course, yes. Well, there are some that like colour as well. I, yeah. I can't deny it. Now, we've got some what you call inverted prints, which we're going to have a... Invertibles. Invertibles, invertibles, which we'll have a look at uh, when we've managed to change them over, actually. <laughs> <laughs> which, are, which are just wonderful idea. That So you can put them up any way you like. Well, this is an experimental idea that I'm not defining which way around you look at it, and that you can look at it either way up. So you can have it on your wall, and if you get bored with it, you can just turn it the other way up and uh, the picture's a little bit different. Yeah, Obviously yeah. people prefer them one way or the other, but yeah, that's Yeah, we've got one up at the, at the moment, and we're just turning it round. I think Peter doing a very expert job oh, there. Oh, yeah, it's very smooth. <laughs> Super. <laughs> well, it's all high-tech, isn't it? <laughs> and there it is the other way around. That, what, which one's that? Well, what, uh, well I haven't given them titles, I've just given numbers at the moment, because mm. uh, as I say, it is experimental. I'm looking for an exhibition to do the rest of them. The idea in the show is that the pictures, you'll actually be able to turn them round on the wall. 
So you'll be able to interfere and interact with the picture, with a lipstick, your hand up and revolve. Yeah. I was going to say, for an artist, it's quite easy to, to exhibit, isn't it? But what about a photographer? Well, there, are, there are lots of photography galleries around the country now, uh, but they're all having tough times like everyone is. Yeah. And I suppose the other thing as well is, we'll say with a photographer, well, they, you can print them off ad infinitum, can't you? You can. No, this is why the galleries usually demand that one does additions. You limit the numbers that you do. With my pictures, there isn't a negative of the image. They're all made up of a separate negative. Yeah. So each print is a little bit different. Uh, but even photographers who take, take straight pictures are demanding to addition them, which I think in relation to photography is a bit of a nonsense. But it's to make it acceptable to the art market. And photography is the bottom end of the art market. So how much can a photograph go for then? Oh, they can go for thousands. Yeah, because uh, I'm thinking about, you know, that there's a great fuss made of that original, I think Robert Duano, uh, yes. was this his name, I can't remember, The Kiss, you know. Yes. I mean, if that original, it cost a fortune. Well, mainly because he had to destroy the negative, because the, the, the guy that was in it, his daughter, was, mm. was very upset. I don't want to talk about that picture in detail. It's quite a horrible picture. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> but everybody knows it. Another picture here. This is a sensational house. A, a clock. <coughs> we can spin that round, can we? Peter, do, Peter doing his uh, spinning bit. Is he going to do it? Is he waking up? Ah, there, we're pulling uh, out. Maybe not. There. This one, this one does go around, but I didn't design it to go around. I must confess. Uh, but as soon as you put things in that are the other way around, you, when you turn it around, you relate to things that are that way around and change the pitch. Now that was the one that I said was very Dali-ish, and there's a, there's another one with yes. a sundial. I mean, yes. it, do you ever look at sort of um, great artworks and think, yes. you know, I'd like to do a bit yes, of? Yes, I look at a lot of painters and a lot of surrealists and the metaphysical artists like the Shiriko and people like that at the turn of the century, mm. the beginning of this century. Mm. We're going to have another. We're going to have another photograph up. We're going to have another picture up. Are we? Are we? Hello. Is anybody listening? <laughs> well, they're not taking any notice of me for a, for a change. There we ah, go. there we have. There we have. This one. is another inverse. This is the last one I did, uh, which I'm, I feel is beginning to integrate them. I'm, I'm, I am moving towards abstraction with these pictures. In the becoming. Uh, well, total abstraction, but using real elements. You see, I don't know how you can get rid of the lines, you know. <laughs> right. How do you patience, do that? Patience, <laughs> I think, in the dark room. You need a lot of patience, because mm. it takes a long time, and we can take from days to weeks to do one of these, so I'm totally happy with all the elements. Uh, and it is patience. Most people get fed up after a few prints. Do you work to a theme? Do you have you know, a set theme, or do you...? Well, there tends to be themes. I mean, there's my personal themes, which are sort of basic eco ecolog ec ecological ideas. Mm. Uh, but I'm happy to work to anything, really. So if somebody day. comes if along someone with asks a... me to do something, I'll do it, if it's yeah. within reason. Now, what I have here is something that the producer said, no, you can't show it. <laughs> are you going to show it? I am going to show it. He's too busy showing something else at the moment. I don't think I he's say, going to show it. Hello. This is... You're not going to show it, Oh, look, there ah. it is. Now, this was my favourite. I wonder why. I can't think what that's about. It's just about fruit and wood, really. It's well, not it's about anything the, the fruit of the wood. Why don't you go? Fruit, fruit of, of our, our loins. loins. You see, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. A rather good-looking chap. My wife likes nice, bananas. <laughs> a nice piece of wood and a bit of fruit. I mean, what is wrong with that? Absolutely very sweet, nothing. Isn't it? And he's very got a very sweet. pert little behind as well, I'm sure. Is, is, that, is that sold in a... I've mean, do a great deal with a bit of a... Well, um, maybe a postcard will be out of it soon. Who knows? Well, if it does go out on <laughs> my wall, that <laughs> absolutely fantastic. Another another picture you have here, which you call "Storm in a Teacup," which is incredible. I mean, the sight of this. I mean, that you know, getting the storm into the. What, how did you do that? Did you put a load of tea in, and then uh, no tea. It's a, it's a bottom of a huge waterfall that's in the teacup to give the rough water. But how did you get the water coming um, out over the cup? Well, just in the masking techniques and playing around with it and getting it right. And yeah. A bit of work with a paintbrush on top of the negative. Oh, really? So you took a picture of a cup? I took the cup with the water going into it and then added the cloud and the storm in the teacup. It was just incredible to look at. That was another post that was out, but originally it was an advert. You see, that would have done for that, um, that record, wouldn't it? Storm in a teacup. It would have been... Would it? Yeah, it's a storm in the up. teacup, the fortunes or somebody, that's that sign it. Oh, right, yeah. It would have been rather, rather good. The fantastic photographs, you see, sometimes they get printed by Athena. Would you, you know, do you not sometimes think, gosh, I wish I had a shop and I sold them myself? Well, marketing's the name of the game, isn't it? I can't sell posters in Tierra del Fuego like they can. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been there very often. Going <laughs> up with your last photograph here, which is... Um, Little blammers, that's it's sort of like clockwork orange in this. I don't no, know. This, why was, this was done for an astrological calendar. This yes. is Aquarius, the water bearer, 
and uh, were, I was trying to be polite, but I, I think I might have failed at politeness here. Why are we trying to be polite? You know somebody who's an Aquarius? Well, I know a lot of Aquarians, but the market demands that you do nice pictures, and uh, I don't always do nice pictures, as yeah. you might have noticed. What, do you, what would you have done for Gemini? Because that's my uh, star sign, then. I'd have to think about that. A bit more research required. Yeah. I'll, I'll watch you closely. <laughs> so you had to sort of go into the psyche of, of what each of the star signs yeah. would be, I suppose. Yeah. Put well, into there's the... a lot of stuff you can read about. There's lots yeah. of books, so it's not a difficult subject, really. Yeah. Basically, how much would we um, have to pay for one of your prints? For an original then? print, between 500 and 1,000 yeah. in a gallery. But to you? All. But to you? But, but, to but you? I don't produce many, of No. Course. So oh, what's the maximum you, you take from one? From, one, uh, from an individual. It depends how much money they've got. Mm. And it does depend on the pitch of how many of, the, of them that I have left. Yeah. As, as they sell. But the generally, how many do you print off? off? Uh, between 10 and 20. Mm. No more. I've had it by then. I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> do you, I mean, do you just do you get the photo, do you print off the print off the print off I, the print? I do each individual print, and each individual print might just take half an hour just to expose it. And if you make one slight error with one element, then you've blown the whole thing. Gosh, and you have to start again. Yeah. Well, Hag, thanks very much. And uh, once again, I know you didn't want to see it, but I rather Ooh, liked it. Shock horror. <laughs> Vanilla. Well, we all suffer from back pain at one time or other in our lives, and a lot of jobs today really cause a few problems with the old back, but there are some very clever contraptions to give you a hand. And before all the blood runs out of my brain, I'll, t I'll get up from this one. With me is Peter Perslow uh, from Aquarius Back Care. <laughs> oh, she's made it. There you go, oh. turn around. Get, oh, some, there you are. get some blood back in your I'm body. I'm elongated. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. I have to stand here for a little bit, don't you?